volunteers, artists, presenters, sponsors that, that make it happen. There's almost about 100 people involved in putting on this program. And one of the things we've been doing between panels is showing a slideshow to thank all the various people that are involved in putting this on. And for this, uh, this round, I wanted to kind of do a shout out to the artists that were involved in a lot of the giveaways. So that is uh, Jeff Carell, Matthias Rendell, Bill Cable, and Jason Peltz. Um, also to Rebel Scum for sponsorship of the collecting panels. So Rebel Scum is the official sponsor of, of the collecting panels. If you haven't had a chance, go to the social area, the collecting social area. It's in 210D, just down the hall. We have a lot of stuff going on there. We have uh, an auction of Darth Vader cases based on the vintage Kenner case that different artists and collectors uh, made and designed to auction off on Sunday. And all the proceeds are going to go to Make-A-Wish Foundation. Um, we also have collectors bringing different swag, different pins and patches to trade. So if you haven't been over there, you'll see a lot of kind of trading and giveaways going on. So do, do check that out. There's also a collector showcase where we have various fans and collectors like you who have contributed photos and information about your own collections. And we have a display of how people are showing their collectibles in their home. Um, so lots of things going on there. There are many other things and kind of uh, you go over there, uh, introduce you to all the various activities in that room. So next I want to kind of introduce our, our speakers. Uh, they're both longtime collectors and longtime friends, Duncan Jenkins and James Burns. And they're going to present on Lego collecting, one of the most popular areas of collecting today in Star Wars. So give a round of applause to our presenters. Duncan, I'm the one from the United States. And I'm James, the one from the UK. And uh, this is the third time we've done a presentation of, well, third time we've done a presentation about Lego. This, this year we've changed it, changed it up a bit. Completely. Yes, exactly. All right, well, first of all, does anybody here collect Lego? Wow, yes. that's, that's pretty good. I, you know, it's, it's one of the more popular brands for sure. Um, so glad to see you all come out here. And Lego has now become probably the biggest toy manufacturer in the world, overtaking Hasbro and Mattel. And a lot of that success since 1999, since the license, since they actually got the Star Wars license, can be attributed to that. Because Star Wars was the first license they got, along with Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh has since disappeared. Um, It'll be back with the live action film, though. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so Star Wars was introduced in 99, and the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah, that really was, before that it was just all, you know, Legos were standalone, their own entities, they didn't delve into the license, but now there's so many popular brands that Lego has picked up over the years, and uh, so it's really fun to see, you know, the Simpsons or the Middle Earth or wherever worlds brought into a uh, Lego uh, way of looking at things, and so Star Wars obviously is, is one of the best, if not the best, in my opinion, uh, of the, the licenses that they do. And very, very soon after introducing the first uh, system sets or minifigure sets, they introduced the Ultimate Collector Series sets. Who here collects those? Yeah, those are nice. Too. So those are really nice. They're normally uh, a lot more expensive than the regular sets, but they come with more exclusive figures. Sometimes they don't even come with figures. Then we uh, also want to look at some of the exclusives. Uh, obviously, there's a nice exclusive that's available here at uh, Celebration. Uh, they have, throughout the years, through other uh, events, toy fair or celebrations or San Diego Comic Cons, things like this. They have had things that you could only get at those. As well as the full events and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll, we'll explain all of those. And then over the last couple of years, there's been a real um, emergence of bootleg Lego products all over the world. Um, not like Star Wars products with, where they're just literally ripping off Lego. Um, we're just going to show you those. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting to see what these people are doing um, and how they're packaging them. We'll just show you those. And I've also got here a couple of um, customized Lego minifigures that people have done in Star Wars in the first, which are really, really cool. Yeah, because obviously there's a big difference between customization and bootlegs. Um, Legos are designed to be interchangeable and customized and create your own worlds and have fun with it. 
um, but it's not too much to off of. And then finally, we've got um, a few store displays uh, to share with you. Obviously, that's uh, probably a whole session in itself because it's the whole Lego store displays have evolved over the years and have changed and I'll keep changing. But uh, yeah, show you what you can do. Like and then there's some, some fun ones, and it is an interesting area because it's beyond just the ones that uh, the packages that you can buy in the stores because obviously are created just for the display, the point of purchase, and uh, so we'll show a little bit of that. Okay, so in 1994, Star Wars Lego was introduced, Lego Star Wars, and the first Osmond Collector series, UCS set, was introduced in 2000. Now, there's a bit of a bone of contention as to how many there have been in terms of the UCS sets. Um, there's been between 23 and 31 sets released to date. Uh, 23 are not disputed, but 8 are. And in 2011, LEGO released this poster which listed those 23 sets that weren't disputed. And there are still 8 that everyone goes back, back and forth. Are they UCS sets? Aren't they UCS sets? But we've sort of covered them all in because I think most people agree that they do fit into the and well, some, someday the United Nations will make a final ruling on it. <laughs> Maybe we'll split you all up into groups here. If you think there's uh, 31 over there and 23 over here, we'll, we'll fight it out over there. So, uh, 2000 and 2001, we got four sets. These four are not disputed. So we have the uh, the X-Wing, uh, the Rebel Cocaine Dark Maul, and the TIE Interceptor. These are all really, really nice pieces. None of them have any figures. Um, very, very hard to find. Um, uh, I think one of them even had a box variation. Was that the uh, mall? I think it was the blockade one. I think that came yeah. with a black and white box as well as a color box. It's the color one. Yeah, yeah. So there was two different box variations on that, which is unusual for a new set. Um, I just should also just point out that in Europe, the boxes are actually very different to what we you get here in the States. Because in the States, you have piece counts and things like that all in front of the boxes. And in, in Europe, we don't have those piece counts at all. So um, there are lots of people that actually collect just box variations as well. So they'll buy the same set multiple times just because of those differences. But uh, luckily, the uh, Legos are less um, diverse per box than some of the other licensees, so those of us that like to complete everything, uh, we don't have to get quite as many as uh, you know, some, some of the places that do one per country or something like that. Now in 2002, 2003, we had Yoda. Um, they've only got a couple of these sort of character the base yeah. and the, the full body of the Yoda. Yeah, you can't see it. Oh, that's tricky, it's not moving forward. Yeah. Well, we know what we're looking at. And just uh, on Cloud City, the, uh, the layer 
Orlando, uh, and the Boba Fett were three completely unique figures to that set. So that was the first one that had a UCS set that had unique minifigures in it. Moving on a little bit, um, we got the, uh, the Time Fighter collection, uh, which was extremely popular. It also contained an EU vehicle, which was the first time we saw an EU vehicle being released like this. Um, Death Star 2, which was incredibly difficult to put together because it was just a mass of grey bricks with uh, uh, a few uh, colours for the laser, but a, a grey brick set. Um, Why we? Uh, the AT-ST, which is actually uh, one of the smallest UCS sets uh, today, and actually the cheapest uh, UCS set that they've released in terms of um, parts to price ratio. So you know, a lot of people do this if they, uh, they go and get a, a Lego set and they'll divide the cost of the Lego set by the number of pieces or bricks inside and they're looking for that 10 cents. This one actually comes in at around about seven and a half, eight cents. So this was a really, really good value set. A lot of people like that. We also have the, uh, the Darth Vader TIE Fighter and the Sandcrawler, which uh, obviously is one of my favorites. I really enjoy that uh, Sandcrawler one. Yeah. Pretty awesome set again. We need to some And then we have some really, really special sets. Um, between 2007 and 2009, obviously, we had the 10th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars. And LEGO went all out to celebrate the 10th anniversary. So, leading up to that, we had uh, the, uh, the ATAT. Now, this was a motorized walking ATAT, which was incredibly impressive. And it did walk, and it walked really, really well. Um, we also had Jeremy Rivas. Which was a technique style, um, but for the UCS. Yeah. And then the three anniversary sets started with the Death Star, which allows you to recreate scenes from all, uh, well, from all three, pretty much, of the Star Wars films, and the original trilogy. And amazing, it had up to 24 minifigures, and it's still available today. Uh, I've heard it's going to be retired very, very soon. So if you haven't got it, uh, I would say now's a very, very good option to go and buy it. Because it's still available online and in the Lego brand stores. It, it, it is absolutely amazing, amazing set. Then we had the Nintendo 4. And then the second biggest commercial Lego style, sorry, Lego set ever made, which is the Millennium Falcon. Uh, this is the only, the only bigger Lego commercial set is the Taj Mahal. And that's probably because of all the smaller, intricate pieces that are all, all the time and around the outside of the actual building itself. So this is an amazing piece. It goes for an awful lot of money on the aftermarket. I think with episode seven coming up, and uh, you know, there's uh, Millennium Falcon in there with a slightly different dome, maybe a good opportunity to uh, revisit this set. Yeah, it's one of the, the things I was going to mention last time. Yeah, the last set on here is actually the only Clone Wars UCS set that they ever made, um, which is um, the drop uh, drop ship, and it's it's a pretty impressive piece. Um, you don't see it, right? No, you don't. Uh, that was uh, one of the that was cool one to, to find them and see that they had done. Each one of these pieces, you think, wow, they, they've really outdone themselves each year. You think, man, these uh, UCS, this is really great when they'll, they'll be able to top this and just keep coming out with better and better uh, things. So kudos to them. And then really coming, coming to where we are now, we've had the Imperial Shuffle. Um, I'm going to move the oh, Jedi Starfighter. Now, the Jedi Starfighter is really interesting because the R2 dome on there is actually four times the size if you scale it up to an ordinary minifigure R2-D2 dome head. Uh, it's the only time Lego have done it, and it's very, very interesting that they did it. I really like it. Yeah. I think it's, 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 it's it. it. it yeah. And it's unique because it's the way it's done it. But they could, if they wanted to, do other Jedi Star Fighters in the same style, same form. R2-D2 with a fully retractable third leg, which was a really nice piece. And then we have the longest uh, so we've had the biggest in terms of pieces. This is, and now we get the longest Star Wars Lego set. And the Star Destroyer was huge, absolutely huge. 
and uh, comes with uh, some exclusive significance as well. We get Austin there, uh, a couple of others, and a great, great set. And then topping it off with the B Wing there. All right. And then um, from 2013 to today, um, we'll, we'll, we'll finish off with what's coming on May 4th this year, so I'll say. So we have the Ewok Village, which is a, an amazing set, still available. Uh, if you haven't got this, it's, it's great, great fun to build. Lots of exclusive minifigures in there, lots of Ewoks, all of your favorite characters, and it's a great set. And then we got a couple of re-releases. So we got a new version of the Sank Order. So this is something that obviously LEGO do revisit previous sets that they've done before. So we've had many different variations of the X-Wing. If you go downstairs, there's actually the 15 year history of how the X-Wing has changed over the last 15 years from where it originated to where it's got to. We actually covered that last year. We did Germany. Yeah. Germany was together. Um, so the X-Wing is, is, is also back out uh, and is a great, great set. And to everyone's uh, uh, great relief, we got uh, Bob Fett's Slave 1. And this is an amazing set. Everything works as it should. So when you rotate, the cockpit rotates. It's a really, really amazing set. Really enjoy it. And then on May 4th, I don't know whether this is on display downstairs, I haven't had a proper look yet, but May 4th, Star Wars Day, you'll have the opportunity to buy a brand new LEGO TIE Fighter. Uh, so this is their exclusive for Star Wars Day this year, and uh, I think it's going to be very popular. I think so too. I will buy one. <laughs> Say no. <laughs> now, exclusives. How many people here find it a real struggle to chase down the LEGO exclusives? There are some very, very difficult ones to find, and you're looking at a couple of them right here. Uh, particularly the uh, the duel is uh, where it all began, the Toy Fair, and um, it also, when you open and play the Vader's March, the it plays, yeah. And so what happened is in 1990 Toy Fair, they uh, sent out these invitations uh, to select members of the press, and we were invited to attend Toy Fair, and that's when they unveiled the Star Wars products for the first time. And they've, done, they've used that before, so um, you can see the air in 2005 for Revenge of the Sith. Those were the, uh, the invites for the VIP bar for those two events. And there were two variations. There's the Luminara variation, it's supposed to be a lot, a lot rarer than the uh, Anakin variation. And then uh, in the background there, you've got the 2005 um, Nuremberg exclusive which is uh, a lot of fake It's a similar toy fair uh, to the New York toy fair, but uh, for uh, Europe. Yeah, so there's, I mean, there's really three big toy fairs. There's the UK, which is in January. The week after, you have Germany, which is in Nuremberg. And then two weeks later, you get the US toy fair. And what they do at toy fair is they, um, they're very, very kind to us. So all those people that travel from the UK or from anywhere over the world, they get it. Are lucky enough to be invited to uh, to attend the, uh, the Toy Fair media briefing. Normally, it's, it's somewhere between 85 and 125 people only that get invited to these things. So it's very, very exclusive, very, very rare. You get some amazing um, items. So over the years, we've had this uh, in the top left-hand corner. We can see Han Solo, and that you could rotate Han Solo, and he turns into Indiana Jones, which is a really, really nice piece. I don't know why the connection, though. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in, to celebrate the 10th anniversary, we got a Chrome Darth Vader. And this is the same Chrome Darth Vader that was available. There was 10,000 available in different sets. I don't know whether people remember that. I saw people take, going into stores with scales and weighing boxes and to see which, which of the sets was heavier so that they knew that it contained the Vader. The lengths people built it. Yes, exactly. Uh, but in this case, then it came in a nice uh, plastic case that uh, was unique to the yep. toy fair. And then uh, in the middle there, you've got one of the rarest. This is um, the Miniland figures. If you go to Legoland, any of the Legolands around the world, you're going to see the Miniland uh, scout figures. And what they did uh, this particular year is, uh, there's only 125 of these sets, they did ham and um, chewy that were glued together. And then they also gave you the pieces to build your very own Boba Fett. So it's a really, really nice. I haven't built my Boba Fett. It's still in its bag. 
Uh, the other two were glued, which is really unusual for a giveaway item because they don't necessarily glue those. Um, but it was great. And then um, uh, another year we got the White Water Fat with a special book uh, which details some of the exclusives that had gone before. And then what they did is later on that year, that was, uh, that was Celebration yeah, uh, 5, right. uh, when you built the mosaic at Celebration 5, they actually gave, you, uh, gave away the White Water Fat. Uh, it still remains a, a, quite a hard to find uh, piece, but uh, DK are actually coming out a brand new Star Wars book very, very soon, and it comes with a new version of the White Wolf. And for those of you that don't know, that's kind of the prototype. Uh, there's a lot of history uh, when they were developing both that for the Empire Strikes Back, and he started off with a costume that was, was all white, uh, and so that's kind of what that And most licensees have actually tackled that. Now this is the, the, the Yoda Chronicles Toy Fair set, it's probably the hardest one to, to acquire. And the reason for that is because of the weather. Now, New York, uh, Toy Fair in New York is notorious for being absolute freezing and to have a lot of snow on the ground. And what happened in 2013 is I couldn't get out to, uh, to Toy Fair and nor could lots of other people. Um, many, many people were grounded, and this was the giveaway for that year, and uh, you can only get the giveaway if you're there. And unfortunately, a lot of us didn't, weren't able to get there, so we didn't get the giveaway, and uh, consequently, this is uh, quite a difficult set to get. Although, uh, Yoda himself, although with a slightly different hair color, thanks Lego, was made available, um, uh, a thousand of them were made available at a Times Square event, um, later on uh, in May that year, when they unveiled the, the largest ever uh, Lego build, which was the big Lego X-Wing in Times Square. So, uh, pretty amazing. And you, you could only buy that from Toys R Us around the corner, and you had to buy the X-Wing with a special wrapper on there. Uh, but really, really nice piece. And uh, the year after that was the Darth Maul, uh, which again was made available to other collectors uh, of various other events. But what's unique about the Toy Fair one is every in in the same way that um, I think some of you will know that when Hasbro create figures, they date stamp on that. Yeah, they date they date they stamp the cards on that. Lego do a very similar thing, so there's numbers on the back of the uh, bags. So there are two versions of uh, Darth Maul. One with an earlier number, which is actually the Toy Fair Toy Fair version of this, which is worth a lot more, lot more even, than the regular version, which they make that. And then finally, we have from, from earlier this year, this is the Toy Fair giveaway um, from uh, New York. And this was a, uh, a really, really thick uh, 160 gram poster of the A to Z of Star Wars figures. Uh, it's a really, really nice piece, which I was able to get. And uh, again, celebrating 15 years of, of uh, Lego Star Wars. So another type of exclusive are these bricks, just specific bricks that they give out. These are actually more of a Duplo size, uh, so they're they're bigger, and but they commemorate specific events, whether it's at one of the Lego lands or the the yellow one down in the bottom corner. There was the very first one that was from Celebration One. So if you were at the Mud Fest in Denver, did anybody go to that? Yeah. Uh, so you know you could uh, get that exclusive brick there, and they were very popular then, and they're still super popular today. Um, very fun, they, they look great, set up alongside with your other uh, Lego sets. Haven't really done this since 2008, 2009, so it's, haven't done one piece right. Yeah. But if they wanted to, we would be interested. <laughs> we <laughs> asked for um, So another... Another place where they do a lot of exclusives, obviously, is events like this, celebration events. And also at San Diego Comic Con, they've done a New York Comic Con exclusive. And for the very, very first time uh, last year, they did a Canada Expo, Fan Expo exclusive as well, which we'll, which we'll highlight in a second. So we've had various different things over the years. Um, in 2009, we got this uh, mini dropship, which is in the uh, bottom left hand corner. And also Hollowbrick Archives um, three piece Lego brick. Mm -hmm. it's, it's flat, three, three flat pieces of Lego which combined together. They came together, by the way. You didn't uh, have to get them individually and put the set together, but uh, that was going to end up. 
the uh, six three packs that you see there in the top right corner. Uh, those were another exclusive, and there was one that was available every day, and then the other five you could only get on a specific day. So one day it would be it's um, preview night on Wednesday, yeah, and Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Friday, Saturday. Saturday. So that's how you got the full set. Um, and that was exciting at the time because that was the first act bar, as I recall. Uh, that was the only place you could get the act bar from that one. Uh, in the bottom right hand corner, this was the first one that they did, uh, I think it was 2010. This is uh, the first time they did the advent calendar. Who collects those? Yeah, those were fun. Those were really, really good fun. And what they did is, um, as, a, as a way to introduce that at San Diego, is that they repackaged it in a special sleeve, um, a rush delivery to get to you uh, as close as you could. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it sold out, there's only a thousand of them. It's a nice box variation. The actual um, advent calendar remained as it the same as the release version, but uh, just the outer sleeve. So some of us paid to get that outer sleeve that was different too. Yeah. And then it also had a um, print print that was exclusive. To that. And then here we have uh, some of the celebration exclusives. So at celebration four, which was here in LA. Yep. Yeah, we had um, this. Great set featuring two stormtroopers, two royal guards, and Darth Vader. And uh, celebration five in San Diego to to link the two together. We had these amazing um, versions of Lego characters featured from the Clone Wars and the Bounty Hunters. Yeah. So instead of the mini figs, they're actual figures out of uh, Lego bricks. Um, and uh, the and I'm really sorry, the guy that designed the name is just dropped from my head. He's designed lots of other Star Wars characters <coughs> in this. Angus. Angus, yeah, thank you. Um, he's designed lots and lots of other Star, um, lots of other Star Wars characters like this, and lots of other um, Marvel characters. You may have he's done it, and he's, he's, he's really, really amazing at what he does. And you can look him up on Facebook and stuff and see everything that he's done. And then we have, again, uh, as we mentioned earlier, the White Boba Fett. But they actually did gold, gold versions of this. And I think there's only three. Uh, there's three, three of the gold, um, and we they came in this of, of authenticity and very, very hard to get, um, but very, very, very much sought after. And bringing it back up to date, really, is who collects new microfighters? Who likes microfighters? They're really, really cool. They're available for uh, in the UK. They're about nine pounds over here. I think they're ten bucks. Ten dollars. Yeah. So um, these were the forerunner for the, not for the four white writers. And it started at, uh, um, at Celebration with the, um, the Loop. Yeah, the Loop Lands in 2012. Then we got um, the Slave One at Celebration. Um, that was Celebration 6. One of them was uh, Comic Con, wasn't it? Com yeah, sorry. The Lands Bigger was Comic Con. The uh, Slave One was um, Celebration 6, and the, um, the Jet um, uh, Starfighter um, with Jet uh, was a San Diego, San Diego Comic Con exclusive. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah, they did three teams. Yeah. They did yeah. San Diego Celebration and then New York Comic Con. Yeah, New York. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. So, so that was the only time that they got a New York Comic Con exclusive, and that was the Dark Horse. And then last year, they did um, the ghost. And what they did with the ghost is they did two versions of this. At San Diego, they had Chopper. And at the Fan Expo in Canada, they had the ghost with Kanan. And there's a slight difference in the color of the hair of Kanan that you find in the boxed version of, um, uh, of the ghost that you can buy, as opposed to what you get in this set. So again, variation hunters try to get both because it's a slightly different version of Kanan. And you know, in the same way, if you go downstairs, something that Lego have done, which is fantastic, and they um, built it at San Diego last year, is this amazing display that features every single minifigure that's ever come out. And in there, you'll see, for example, two different Yodas with a slightly different color hair. Um, so all these variations, a bit like Hasbro cars and Ken cars from Lego, but there isn't so many of those in Lego. But when you do come, it's very, very difficult to try and get all of them. That, that Canadian one kind of took a lot of uh, collectors by surprise. I mean, a lot of people weren't really aware that that was coming out. Yeah. 
Well, it's in the uh, 10th anniversary, so it starts in 99, um, and then some of these go up from 2007 to 2009 there. Uh, but some of the stuff that they did to kind of promote the success of the line, really, and, and herald the, the 10 year anniversary of that. So here we have a t shirt. Uh, and DK did a whole run, uh, run of the postcards, which we don't have here, to go to coincide with the t shirt and, and book book, which we'll come on to in a second. Uh, we had the Crow Darth Vader. We had a, a Crow Stormtrooper, uh, which was also available as a magnet. The bottom left hand corner. And then we also had the, uh, the Chrome C3PO, which was available in uh, 10,000 different sets. So again, people were wagging boxes trying to get their uh, Chrome C3PO. And then there was the real solid gold C3PO's that were going to Yeah, I got six. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Star Wars Day, May 4th, Hallmark Holiday. Soon, soon, soon. So what's uh, Lego do, uh, what they have done over the last few years is they've uh, brought out an exclusive minifigure. There is one coming this year. And uh, we've had so far, we've had TC14, which is pretty cool. We've had Han Solo in his pop, now confirmed brown jacket. <laughs> For anyone that was ever in any doubt, his jacket was definitely brown. We've had uh, a real surprise last year when we got Darth Vader. Uh, I think a lot of people were surprised yeah. that we were getting an EU character. Um, we need Darth Vader to go with it. <laughs> um, we've had the, the EU um, Shadow Scout Trooper, which is pretty cool. This year we're getting Admiral Buran, um, which will be available uh, purchases of 75 bucks or more in the US, or 50 pounds in the UK. I don't know what it is in, uh, in, in Euros. Uh, so if you go and buy your TIE Fighter on May 4th, you get your free day. Yeah, get free day. And then what they've done as well is, um, again, this isn't something that's necessarily publicised an awful lot. It's they do these little mini builds on Make Four sometimes in the store. So this Holocron drawer that you see here, 31 piece Holocron drawer, was only available in the UK. And there was, a, there was a sheet, you could only do it on one particular day, and you went in and got the Holocron drawer, and really, really nice. And uh, you can see next to that, uh, there's a small version of Jet Routine's um, Starfighter as well. Again, only available at a specific day and time. Um, so some of those are really hard to get, um, but really nice. Yeah, that's fun. So, I mentioned before, um, this, this big build, Lego uh, decided that they would have a go at building the biggest set ever. And they decided that the X-Wing is what they're going to do. This, this, this X-Wing is 42 times the size of the X-Wing that you, you could physically buy at the same time. And what they did was is that they, uh, they took this to New York uh, once it was built, and it was stored in, a, um, in, an, Air, Air, in an Air Force base hangar whilst they put it together and made sure it would fit properly after it was transported over. And they invited uh, four members of the press, four different teams of the press, to come along and have a look at it. We were one of the uh, teams that went. And it was incredibly impressive. We didn't know what we were seeing. And we walked in and saw this. And it, uh, I think it just blew our minds away. This was, this was done to promote the Yoda Chronicles um, in 2012. And it was an amazing, amazing build. You could actually walk up to the steps and sit, in, sit inside the cockpit and be photographed. Um, and this now uh, resides in Legoland, California. So whilst you're here, you've got time, you can head on down there and pull to see the Brandon Death Star, which he's not going to display that to. And what they did in the top right-hand corner here to promote this, they sent out roughly 100 of these sets of the, um, the Holo Holocron Chamber. Uh, really, really rare set. And it's got uh, a Holocron droid, different to the Holocron droid that was available in the UK. And it comes with Yoda and a couple of um, uh, Jedi Pipelines as well. Really, really nice set. And I've tried to actually complete it myself by buying an additional piece, so I've got a complete chamber that I can complete the Joker, uh, which is really nice. Uh, but it's a really, really nice piece. The, uh, just to comment on the, the full scale X Wing there, you can't just start putting pieces together and make it. I mean, you have to really figure out all the, the physics of, of how you're going to, to um, put something that large together. It doesn't 
stand up on, on its own. Uh, so there was some, some, a lot of detail that went into actually how can we create this and actually have it stay together. It's got a full map of frame inside. Uh, so oh, every single stub that you see is made up of Lego bricks. So. How many pieces? Anybody know how many pieces it was? More than two. <laughs> yeah, we did, we did. We actually had that out in the last. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so books. You can uh, while you're reading have an exclusive minifig as well. Uh, this is a fun area to get an exclusive minifig, and so they put some DK has a lot of interesting uh, books that will have. Lego history, some great pictures of uh, the minifigures as well as the sets, give you details about them, years of release, number of pieces, all that kind of thing. Um, and then as a bonus, you get an exclusive figure. Um, and then the same thing with the Yoda Chronicles, the, uh, the Blu-ray there that was an exclusive to Walmart. Ian Solo. Sorry, Ian Solo. Ian Solo, that's right. So again, really, really nice. There's a brand new book uh, coming out. Again, um, the updated and expanded version of the character encyclopedia will be published very soon. And that comes with a brand new version of the white prototype Boba Fett with printed legs and stuff. So uh, that's going to be something that a lot of people want. The Lego Visual Dictionary is probably one of the best, well, it is the best selling Lego Star Wars book. Uh, ever produced. Um, it sold in excess of 6 million copies. It was on the New York Times bestsellers list for 15 or 16 weeks. Um, and it's, uh, for the 15th anniversary, it was completely revised and updated. I think we actually announced that like, exclusively a German that was coming. So, um, and that came with a retro looking Luke figure with a yellow face, um, as you can see at the bottom right hand uh, side. Uh, interesting fact that Lego actually, um, when Lego got the NBA license, they decided to, that they, they would move from yellow faces to uh, skin tone faces because of all the NBA players. And at that time, a year afterwards, all the Lego um, people also evolved in the same way and we started getting uh, our flesh colored faces where appropriate. <coughs> Nice striking colours. Um, it's just interesting to see what lengths people will go to. Um, I picked up a few of these um, because they're just interesting to see what they've done. The quality is absolutely abysmal. Um, they don't necessarily stay up, stay stuck together after you first put them or together. together. Or, or yeah, or even fit together, or even have the right pieces in them. Um, <laughs> But they are interesting, um, and it's, I think it's because of Lego's success that obviously people feel that there's a market for this in the Far East and Poland and some of the other countries that have been made available. And you see the one in the center and the ones in the top left, they're getting away from, uh, by this is not Star Wars, this is Star War. <laughs> completely different, so clearly we have a great success. But that goes all the way back to the vintage figures as well, the Turkish bootlegs yeah. uh, would do the same thing. Ah. As opposed to these customs, which uh, Ralph Cazosa has done, so this is George Sackle, um, and he's done George Lucas and other ones, and these are great. You know, these are somebody that's taken uh, a Lego minifigure and transformed it. Um, I've got no issue with these, and I don't think Lego would have any issue with these either because they're using proper Lego parts to achieve something that isn't necessarily available. But and they're not for sale also. Correct. Whereas the food eggs are... <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, displays. As I had told you before, these are some fantastic pieces. Oh, wait, these don't look all that fantastic. Well, we'll get there. Um, as, as we mentioned, this is about the evolution of the displays as well. So the very first ones were just, you know, pretty much standard cardboard. Nothing too elaborate, so just the, the images uh, for the prequel there, you can see all the Lego prequel people in the, the top uh, left, and then carried over into Attack of the Clones uh, with the Django Fett techniques, and then uh, the one at the bottom there is even a, a German version. Uh, they did 
both Darth Vader and Darth Maul with this kind of infinity using the force to, to put the pieces together. And that's still one of my favorite logos, actually. It is, it's a great one. And also from the, the beginning there, the Phantom Menace, they had the Galactic Challenge Building Contest. So there was uh, pieces there um, displayed that you could get if you were lucky enough to have a, a store contact that would uh, let you have it when they were done. But it was a contest that you could enter. You can tell um, by the guy, the little kid there holding the Nambu Starfighter that playing with Legos is lots of fun. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Although I do take issue with the fact that it's only for 5 to 12 year olds. Excuse me. No, thank you. <laughs> it's only suggested. It's right. Oh, okay. It's only suggested. It goes up to at least 14. <laughs> okay, Attack of the Clones. Now we're finally getting into some good uh, displays where you're actually taking ships, creating them in a diorama, having some great background. Uh, you can see here that my uh, Jedi Starfighter uh, did get a, a hit scored on him from the Slave One, thereby changing the whole history of Star Wars. But uh, <laughs> I do need to, to get in there and get him put back together, but that's one of the things about these displays is they're super, super difficult to get into if you want it to look good when you put it back together. You can get into it fairly quickly otherwise, but actually keeping the, the plexiglass um, in good shape is kind of hard. This is actually one of my favorite displays. Um, I actually saw this last year um, in, the, in the States, in a little place called Petaluma. Anybody heard of it? And I was with James Antwi when we saw this. And uh, it, it's an amazing display. I, I haven't seen it outside of the US at all. And it features every single minifig that's available for that year. that year in one place, along with some of the sets. And you can just about see that uh, Jet um, is actually on a little yellow plinth because that's, you know, the main focus of the Yoda Chronicles. Highlighting it from the Yoda Chronicles, yeah. And it's got the Rancor and the Jabba the Hutt new figs in there as well. And then a couple of, uh, you know, sets with like the Yoda and Palpatine. We like this one. Yeah, this is a fantastic, fantastic piece. So they've, they've really gotten good. Well, uh, a friend of ours from Germany uh, named Wolfgang, Schlegel is, was unable to make it to this celebration. He's been to many of the others in the past. And he's a collector of Lego displays. And so when he has seen our presentations in the past of the Lego, he said, you know, I would like to add the displays in there. And so we were going to have him help us with that. But unfortunately, he couldn't make it. So he offered to have a few of his displays shown in here as well. So these next few are from his collection. And uh, again, just great diorama scenes showing the, the sets in action and how they all look together. It's a nice big four foot one. One of the biggest ones. And it's called like exchangeable versus fixed. Uh, so you can actually keep the display there in the store, take out the sets, put in the next wave of sets when they come in, as opposed to this one that's a fixed display because that backdrop there is specific to the Nabu and the Hawk, you're not going to use that when the next set of figures comes out, the next set of, uh, of sets. So they also would just be exclusive to one contained unit there. And then we've got these uh, tubular or displays, which are um, circular, which fit on a shelf or on an end cap, um, and they can be swapped out. It's just a matter of taking off the, box, the uh, top of the bottom and changing what's inside. Um, and these are, uh, have appeared in many different guises, with and without lights and sounds. So motion sensors as well, so you can walk past them, the lights come on, and you get the sound and the lights and just these. Um, lots of different ones. Some more European versions there, with, uh, going you know, a ways back and then some of the more recent ones. Uh, Wolfgang's done a really good job of uh, collecting all of these and putting them together. So the snow speeder and then the one at the bottom there with the kind of a, a longer, uh, it's not as big, but it's just been more of a so, so the one at the bottom would actually go on the front of a shelf and actually hang on the front of a shelf and then you have sets above and below. So, so it wouldn't take up a lot of space on a shelf, which, which obviously you know, shops retailers like because they want more, more shelf space to be able to sell you more product. So there's Wolfgang, and uh, if you want to look at uh, some of his collection, there's the, uh, the 
link that you can uh, follow to to see his collection. But uh, you know, we wanted to thank him for allowing us those photos. Before we finish up, there are um, some late exclusives available. Yeah, so I should know. So we just just thought we'd bring you up to date on those. So every day there is going to be a mini build downstairs, and today's mini build is a little Star Destroyer. And uh, what's really, really nice about the mini is it comes with a printed brick. And the printed brick has Lego Star Wars on it, and it also has Celebration Anaheim logo on it. So um, every day there's a different one. Don't know what is coming, day two, three, and four. And you can all go and build one of these a day downstairs. Then you can also buy this amazing Lego exclusive. This is the first time they've done something like this. This is a mini, mini diorama from Tatooine, and it comes with a C3PO minifigure. It's got 178 pieces, and I think it's $60. Or um, or 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 sorry, no. Even no, better. I'm thinking euros, sorry. <laughs> and so um, it's, it's $40, um, and it's available uh, at a Lego room. You need to queue up for the coins to be able to get that. That means line up for you, Americans. Yeah. <laughs> and as, as if all of that wasn't enough, every day um, um, there will be two posters made available. So what they're doing is uh, they're doing episode one to episode six Lego stylized posters, and on the back of the posters is um, um, a brand new poster for so Droid Towers, which is a brand new TV series which is coming to Disney, uh, Disney XD Channel, um, and this will chronicle. Um, the whole saga of the original six movies through the eyes of R2D2 and C3PO, and that's coming to Disney XD very soon. So there's some exclusives for you to go and find here whilst you're at Celebration. So uh, thank you very much. That's it, thank you very much. because we already have one, so... Okay, I have mine. Uh, so, oh, I want one, I want one. Well, it's not gonna be too easy, okay? Who can name the first UCS Star Wars set? That would be the uh, UCS X-Wing. Okay. Second one was the second one. Yes, go ahead. Second one was the Interceptor. The TIE Interceptor. You got it. Concurrent, we would have accepted either one. Well done. Come well, get your exclusive. Thanks. Oh, he's a Jedi. Is that what you can see? Yeah. Okay. If you have questions, we will be in the uh, collector's lounge. And we'll take questions over there. Okay, thank you.